So a lot of it comes in from the left, and so it can be fairly consistent in old master paintings. And so here, I just found figures. The light was coming in from the left. I could fit them all together and uh, <laughs> use them use them in the foreground. Some of the figures in the back are invented. Some of them are me. I'll just pose quickly and uh, snap a picture and maybe work from that. Um, so let's talk about making some things back in here. Uh, when I switch them onto the big, big canvas, I'm going to flatten these guys down into the mud. So there'll be a little bit of a gap there where you can move back into the space and uh, see what's happening behind. It'll be the flat freeze like this one. Uh, this piece, I was thinking of this being on also going into the, the big painting. Um, but I've decided not. And I want half of the painting to be destruction and half of it to be construction. Um, so this side, uh, I'm probably not going to use. They may be, they may show up in the background. I don't know quite what will come in the background yet. Um, but this is Louis Takes Flight. And um, I had a lot of fun putting this together. Uh, these good little guys in the back are all made up and just figuring out what they were going to be doing. I posed all these figures myself and uh, just you know, gave myself longer sideburns or a bigger chin or whatever um, to put that together. And uh, just thought, liked the idea of you know, wherever they might have gotten that Louis XIV uh, furniture, just using it as some sort of weapon to break down the fence sort of intrigued me quite a bit. Um, that's a famous supermodel, uh, Christy Turlington. <laughs> <laughs> Who I once had a nice chat with in the kitchen over her boyfriend's pig. <laughs> Do you want to tell us about that? <laughs> um, I taught Jason Patrick how to paint and draw like Rembrandt in a month for a, a film he was doing called Incognito. And um, his girlfriend at the time was Christy Turlington. I didn't know who she was. I mean, she was serving his tea, and I had a nice chat with her. Actually, it was in his house for a month and a half, so I, I taught him for a pretty long time. Um, but I come home the first day, and my wife and her sister say, "What was she like?" And I said, "It was a he." You know, I was teaching. Yeah. God. No, what was she like? And I said, "What are you talking about, Christy Turlington? Who's Christy Turlington?" <laughs> <laughs> and they told me, "Well, she's a supermodel." Um, she was cute, but she wasn't. <laughs> 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 um, that was recorded. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, I don't think so. She's, she hasn't really had anything to do with me since. <laughs> um, this is uh, Dark Horse. Um, and I just got this image of this woman going through the snow. I grew up in Wisconsin, so I, I have uh, snow in my background. Um, and just imagine this horse with this nude woman on it uh, galloping through the woods. and. Uh, started seeking ref reference for it, uh, took mostly online. I found you know, dozens and dozens of horse images, mostly race horses, but I used Moybridge's horse. Some of the first photographs ever taken were of these galloping horses. So uh, most of the body is from that. Most of the anatomy wasn't clear enough in that, so I had to seek that with uh, other horses. Um, and found, a, you know, found some great stuff, found one image of a horse with black teeth, which I really liked. Um, I was really happy with the eye here because you can see the reflection of what's out here. Uh, the trees are out here in it. Um, the woman is also invented. Generally, I don't do that, uh, but she's also from tons of reference on, online. I'm convinced you can find anything online you want. Um, there's actually sites devoted to nude women on horseback. <laughs> and, uh, but that, wasn't, that was not that useful. None of them were in the pose I wanted. So I found another site called On All Fours, which is just nude women on all fours. And that had knees and elbows and arms and all these weird things um, that were very, very useful to me. Um, they, oddly enough, there's about 30 new images posted on that site every day by guys from wherever. Um, but so she's constructed out of a lot of different, uh, different people. Um, and the background isn't just invented. I, mean, I sought reference for it, but basically I'm just making it up. I'm not a photorealist at all. I just you know, I construct things. Um, I might use photo reference at times, but you know, I, uh, I'm basically inventing that forest. There's no, seat, no part of that that comes from any photograph. It's just invented. Trees aren't that difficult to paint, I guess. I don't know. And I started from the back and moved forward, so everything. This was the last part that was painted. And from the back there. I was painted first, I just moved forward. The snow I liked, um, it's, none of it's white. It is, it's got pinks and blues and 
other things in it, but it's, it feels like snow. It feels quite feels like the light late afternoon or early morning, whatever that might be, coming to the forest, which I like quite a bit. I did a, I'm teaching a class to MFA students uh, in Laguna, and I've given a bunch of lectures about narrative painting to them. And one of the lectures was about movement. And I'd done this painting before that lecture, but I was happy to find that a lot of the things that I was talking about in that lecture I had used already. I discovered it um, in, in doing research about movement. So screening was one of those where you've got uh, you know, something that's blocking part of an image, and the, the human mind will, will make that move out from behind something. So you can move forward. Blurring was another one, uh, something called flicker, where you've got different colors of, of paint. Um, so a lot of stuff was going on to make the horse move a bit. Take a look at this. Um, a painter in uh, 19th century France that was one of the most hated men in modernism uh, was William Adolf Bouguereau. And uh, I just, I, I did a drawing of these little girls picking up this guy uh, and carrying him away, maybe to toss out a window. 10 years ago, and I thought, that's too stupid, you know, I can't really do that image. And I just suddenly thought of it this year, I thought, if it's Bouguereau, it's really cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I put these girls, little, it's like a little dance troupe. My daughters are both in, uh, in ballet, and they wore these little black leotards. And, and I thought, you know, it's a modern dance troupe, tossing the, the old white guy out the window would be kind of a, <laughs> kind of a cool image. Um, he, got, he got in trouble with the Impressionists, which is why he's so hated. And he, uh, Bouguereau, is the, like the boogeyman. When I was uh, in school at Lawrence University, there was a big one of, of Bougaros on the wall of the lecture hall where all the art history lectures were given. And the, the art history professors would you know, say, oh, Bouguereau was horrible, and they, they show slides of his work, and it was kitschy, and, and you know, all these angels and cupids. And so students started poking holes in the Bouguereau. And they had about 20 holes by the time I left the school. I wasn't doing it. <laughs> but uh, it got damaged. And uh, later, a few years later, the prices started climbing again in Bougaro. So they climbed into the millions again. Uh, but at that time, it wasn't that valuable. And so I'm sure they fixed it. A <laughs> uh, couple little images over here that I worked on. This one is uh, it's a man of meteors, a uh, painted man of meteors. Uh, there's an egg tempera. Uh, technique that I learned when I lived in Vienna, Austria, and uh, studied with Rudolf Hausner in the Academy of Fine Art there. And so I use that occasionally. I don't always use it, but in this painting, that's uh, a lot of what's on this figure, most of this part. Uh, there are some other things that are painted in straight oil, like the plants, but uh, the figure and the glow here is because of that technique that uh, Rudolf Hausner taught. Um, and this uh, this figure I started out as a demo in class. This was a Rembrandt technique. That was it started out as a demo uh, for the egg tamper and oil technique. And I just took them home and worked on them a bit more. So the uh, Rembrandt technique, basically a 16th century Dutch painting technique, uh, which is what I learned when I taught uh, that actor how to paint, Jason Patrick. So you know, when I got the call to, to teach him, I first had to go out and learn it myself, and it changed the way I paint. So that's, that's, that's an example. Of this is uh, this is me naked. <laughs> uh, Self-portrait as a masterpiece of creation. It was a response. Uh, for an online magazine uh, to a poet's work uh, that was called uh, Masterpiece of Creation in Three Acts. And he talked about uh, Frida Kahlo, Max Beckman, and Lucian Freud as these three artists. And he, he wasn't fond of any of their work, but he, he liked Frida okay, Max a little bit less, and hated Lucian Freud. Um, I sort of feel about them in the opposite. I, I thought Lucian Freud was the greatest living painter. Uh, and he's still alive while I was baiting this. Um, he died recently. Uh, Max Beckman, uh, I, I've always liked compositions. I think they're great. Uh, Frida Kahlo, I like too. But, um, but you know, sort of the opposite order of what he had written about in his poem. And so I put them. You know, I started thinking of what I could do in the studio to, uh, as a response to his painting, and uh, arranged them, sort of moving stuff around. Uh, thought I'd get in there, um, and. You know, as an artist, you are exposed. I mean, I try to put as much as I can of, of myself out. 
Um, I guess I left a little hidden. <laughs> uh, and I, at some point, I, you know, I, I think initially I was thinking of putting something on that and thought after a certain point, no, I just leave it blank. It, that is so much more powerful that way, and it turned out pretty nicely. Um, again, the Confederate uh, you know, background is general in my family history that I found out about, and his father, who was a senator, the death mask up there, uh, sort of relate to that. So there's this darker sort of side of, of things that come out uh, in these paintings, too. This little bit of writing on here relates to uh, some of the wording in the poem. The last line of it was something about uh, Freud dipping his brush in the, the lifeless and stagnant water of life or something. <laughs> I thought, you know, no, that's not true. Freud's a great painter. Uh, but I, I thought, I dip my uh, brush in the same water then uh, as that. Out at the top, is that a fetus? Yes, it is. It's a sonogram. Um, you know, I thought masterpiece of creation, as an artist, it's kind of uh, arrogant to even think that way compared to, you know, what life presents. And uh, certainly in the case of my own daughters, you know, having seen that sonogram and, and just thinking about that. This isn't specifically theirs. I couldn't find out anymore. But uh, um, so it's, it's sort of a generic sonogram. But uh, the idea was just thinking about life and, and the creation of life. Um, this piece was actually done after that. But it's more what the inspiration for this piece was. It was just the, I thought for a long time, every morning I'd get up and look in the mirror, and it's in my bathroom, and see this reflection down the hall. And uh, something it seemed to me to be about, uh, it seemed to be about the passage of time, and uh, this sort of ancestral hallway. And I thought about that a lot. It ended up being this painting, and then I just thought, no, I'll, just, I'll go ahead and do that one too. Um, so I you know, set it up in the bathroom and painted there. Um, and everybody says I look kind of intense. <laughs> uh, this little figure comes from uh, Las Meninas, uh, from Velazquez, the, uh, the dwarf kicking the dog is off on the right-hand side. So I, I put that in uh, just as a little vignette. Um, but there was something about the tilt of that that reminded me of that. Uh, so that's, that's why that got in there. Um, and if that's, that's a painting that people talk about uh, as the you know, a lot in art history, but it's, it's written about, there's articles, of it, article after article about Las Meninas, so uh, it's a painting that sort of intrigues me too, that's why I slipped that in. Uh, this is The Wave. Um, I pose that, my wife, my youngest daughter, and uh, it is the, I used to have these dreams fairly often about these waves building out in the ocean and, and washing toward us and building and coming in. And uh, I, I thought, uh, you know, I, I would always wake up when the wave finally hit, you know, except for one time when I actually ran out the back door and there was a snowstorm. <laughs> so I was trying to escape in, in the car and get, keep getting stuck in the snow. But that was the one time that I didn't wake up when the wave hit. But it was something recurring, you know, big things in life or whatever it might be building up uh, slowly. You can see them coming. And, and Flash in. I thought it'd be interesting. At first, I did a little study for it, um, put myself in the room that Hopper did, uh, called the Room by the Sea, where you see this ocean outside, an open window, no figures in it, it's just the sunlight hitting the, the wall. Um, and then I, I, had, I had myself in there, big waves splashing in. I didn't like it much. And so I shifted the whole focus, moved in closer, thought it'd be so much more interesting if I put my teenage daughter in there. Um, you know, teenage years, all this stuff hits you. And I thought it'd be even more interesting if she's got this ecstatic look on her face, uh, like a, a saint who's been, been tortured to death or something and going to heaven, you know? So uh, I thought that, uh, that would be interesting. Um, the, you know, moving around, the figures I capture from photographs, generally, uh, but everything else is invented. It's just, uh, I might have reference, but it's made up. 